What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So Tesla just released the Tesla Model S refresh. So for those of you who don't know, I bought the Model 3 um, right in 2021, right when it got refreshed. So I actually got the refreshed model with all the, you know, the weird things that they finally changed. I made a video of that. I'll put it uh, right above my head. But they finally did this to the Model S. The Model S has been the same for... I don't know, since 2012, whenever it got released, and everyone's been making speculations of if they're gonna refresh it, what it's gonna look like, what certain things are gonna change, and they finally just released all that on their website. I'm actually a couple days late on doing this. I found out about this, like, three days after they did it and hadn't had a chance to film the video, but I've done a little bit of research, and I know some things, so I'm super excited to make this video because I'm a huge fan of Tesla, and I've been waiting for them to make these changes for so long. So the first major change that you'll notice is obviously the steering wheel. They basically cut off the top half of the steering wheel and made it this weird like half a square type like fighter jet steering wheel i don't really know if you call it a steering wheel because it's not a wheel anymore but essentially they just cut off the top of a steering wheel this is going to be super cool for like racing but I, what i don't understand is how you're gonna like i drive and i just put one hand on the top of the steering wheel that's just normally how i drive and it, that's going to be really weird getting used to unless i mean obviously you can have it in autopilot so much but still it's going to be weird another thing that i don't know about is when you turn you tend to like turn the wheel and then let it kind of just like slide between your hands like slide over and you can't do that with the you know half of a square so i don't know i'm definitely skeptical on it but i'm a huge fan of tesla so i'm excited to see what this looks like once it like actually needs production but it's still it's gonna take some getting used to so moving on they finally changed the screen to a horizontal 17 inch screen which is so much better than the one they had before that's probably one of the things that i hated about the model s most was that weird diagonal screen i don't know and then it kind of turned and faced you i didn't like it at all even though the model s is definitely can perform way better than the Model 3. I've actually always liked how the Model 3s looked anyways, especially in the interior. So I'm glad that they finally updated that. Plus, as far as software updates, they're gonna be able to make software updates a lot easier because now they can just put one update out to basically all of the new cars. One thing I'm not sure of is if you have an old Model S with the, uh, not horizontal, what's it called? With the vertical screen, I'm not sure how you know, how fast they're going to keep updating those because they're not, I don't know, we'll just have to figure that out once it comes out, but I've been saying the screen in the Model S was ugly for so long, so now that they changed it, I'm a little bit more leaning to the side of getting one, but I still want a Cybertruck more than anything, and I don't know, I'm just a huge fan of the Model 3s, like, it's not meant to be a super luxury car, it's just, it, it's just so basic and I just like it better. I like that the Model 3s don't have the uh, screen in front of the steering wheel. Everything is just so simple and plain on the Model 3s. On the new Model S, they did keep the screen behind the steering wheel. They actually added a screen in the back over here where kids can like play games and control the, the AC vents back there, which is pretty cool. It's definitely a better feature than, you know, what we have in the Model 3, but like I said, I'm just a fanboy of the Model 3 and I think I'm gonna stick with it. So probably the weirdest thing besides the like crazy steering wheel is that they they took away the turn signal column and the gear shift column. I don't really know what it's called, but those two little like knobs behind the steering wheel. They took both of those out. And so the first question is like, well, how do I change gears? How do I put it in reverse? Basically the car will guess what direction you're gonna go next. So say like you're backed into a garage and you open the garage door, it'll automatically know, okay, you're definitely gonna pull forward. And then same when you're, you know, you're parked in a parking lot at Walmart and there's a car in front of you and a car on each side, it's gonna automatically know I need to back up. And then once you take your foot off the gas and then put your foot on the gas again, it should be in drive. Now there is a way that you can essentially like override this in the screen. The only thing that like, I don't understand how that works is like, what if you're just in an empty parking lot and I just want to back up instead of going forward? I don't, I don't know how accurate it's going to be. So it's going to be kind of weird to get used to that. But that's super weird to think that you don't have to put it in a drive when you get in the car. You just, it just knows. Definitely super advanced and going to be super weird getting used to. As for the turn signals, those will just be buttons on the steering wheel as well as the horn. And it's almost weird that they didn't put the park neutral drive in reverse on the steering wheel like as just a button. It's still going to just be like super weird getting used to. When I got my refreshed Model 3, I was so excited because they finally added um, wireless charging in the car that came stock with the car. Now the new Model S comes stock with two charging pads in the front as well as two charging pads in the back. That way the people in the back can also just sit their phone right there and charge them, which is obviously way better than just charging with a cord. Another thing I was super excited for when I got my car was that they finally got rid of that stupid chrome. The trim, the door handles, the mirrors, everything was chrome before and they finally changed it to like a chrome delete or a satin black, whatever you want to call it. I was actually going to wrap my car in satin black. Well, I was going to wrap the trim and the door handles in satin black and then 
mine came like that and I didn't even know until like after I ordered it so I was super happy that mine came like that but with the Model S refresh you finally get the chrome delete also so there's no longer a chrome option as far as I know I don't think you can put a chrome option it comes stock with the satin black door handles and trim which to me looks so much better I hated the chrome from day one like I think that's one of the biggest things that made Tesla's ugly well maybe not the biggest but I don't know I just didn't like it another really weird thing with the refresh is that now the speakers are supposed to be a lot better than they were before and now there's a um I don't know like what the actual technology is like I can't remember what it, like I can't remember the fancy word of like what it's called but basically when you have like Bose um headphones on Bose like hears outside noises and then cancels them out and then that way you don't hear them that's like why they're called noise canceling headphones but apparently the new Tesla Model S the refresh version comes with that technology in the car so that road noise wind noise it'll hear that noise and cancel it out and make up for it like when you just listen to the radio so it's supposed to be way quieter and you're supposed to not hear like road noise and wind noise like you're supposed to hear it way less than you were before i don't know how good this works i haven't seen any videos on it yet that's just that gets me so excited like how the future is going to work with cars and having the wind noise and the road noise and everything else i've never heard of any cars doing this before so that's super cool also in my model 3 i have heated seats i got the standard range plus so just my front two seats are heated not the back but if i got the performance or the dual motor it would be heated seats in the back anyways one is my car came with heated seats but what it doesn't have is ac seats like the cooling uh ventilated seats that kind of just slowly blow air mine doesn't have that and with the refresh they finally added that so now you have the heated seats as well as cooling seats i live in florida so having the cooling seats is like the best thing ever heated seats are cool in the winter like right now it's i don't know right now it's like 50 degrees so i have my heated seat on but uh, i only use that like a couple months out of the year if i had ac seats or ventilated seats whatever you call them that would be way more beneficial than the heated seats at least where i live but i'm super excited for that to come out and i hope that all of these new things that are in the model s are also the Cybertruck because I'm way more excited to get the Cybertruck than I am the Model S and I know a lot of people you know either love it or you hate it I love the Cybertruck I think it looks cool on the outside I like you know I like everything about it and I'm super excited for when that comes out I just think it's crazy a truck that big to do 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and with a 500 mile range like that's that's crazy to me and I'm I'm way more excited for the Cybertruck than I am the Model S to be honest but I know a lot of people love the Model S speaking of 0 to 60 with the Plaid and the Plaid plus the zero to 60 is 1.9 seconds i've never even been in a car the fastest car i've ever been in was probably like a 3.3 seconds zero to 60 1.9 and it's electric so it feels even faster i can't even imagine what that would feel like like my car is a 5.3 that's not even fast but in a tesla it feels ridiculous because it's just completely instant like anyone who's ever driven a tesla knows exactly what i'm talking about like you can't compare it but it being electric and a 1.9 second zero to 60 is like insane i think the long range comes comes with yeah, okay, so the long range, the 0 to 60 is 1.9 seconds, which is nuts. And then the actual range is 360 miles on a charge. I'm sorry, 390 miles on a charge, which is still pretty crazy. But the Plaid Plus has the same 0 to 60, but the range is 520 miles. That will be the longest range an electric car has ever driven. Obviously, these numbers are way better than the Cybertruck, so I'm not trying to dog on it. I would still rather the Cybertruck, but 1.9 seconds and 520 miles, that's crazy. Now, even just the long range so the long range the 0 to 60 is 3.1 seconds that's the same as the performance model 3 but you know what that's kind of interesting because if you get the performance of the model 3 i think it comes out to like around 60 something thousand and for 72,000 or 73 oh wait this doesn't include potential savings oh that's actually closer to 80 my bad but for 80,000 you can get the same 0 to 60 as you can in the performance model 3 plus you get a way longer range because i think in the model 3 it's like 300 something miles but in the model s it's 412 miles on a single charge now before i end the video i just want to go through some of these upgrades so let's just select it let's do plaid plus and scroll down so as far as paint options it's pretty much the same as in the Model S before. Um, they didn't really change that much. They, I didn't mention this before, but they did actually change the outside of the car a little bit too, but it's nothing drastic. It's nothing to even put in the video. It's, it pretty much looks the same as it did before. Just it got like a little bit of a facelift as well. Now I'm going to pick white because I just think white is the best. Now for rims, I don't really even know why, but when you upgrade the rims, it's $4,500. It's almost five grand for just rims. 
Like, I could upgrade the rims on a Lamborghini for that price. So I don't really know why that's that much. Maybe one of you, like, actually knows the reason. If so, like, leave it in the comments below. I think that's ridiculous. I would never pay that. Now, interior, there's black, white, and then this tan. Even though I love my white seats, I really like this tan, and I wish that they had it in the Model 3. So if I did end up getting the Model S, I probably would go with this tan because I just think it's pretty unique. I don't really see it in other cars. I mean, same with the white, but the tan's pretty cool. So those are just some of the upgrades. I mean, I could go on and on and on about all the things that they've changed, but I just figured I'd kind of go over the most interesting stuff like the fact that you don't have to put it in park and there's no circle like steering wheel they changed way more in this car than i'm naming in the video i mean everything from like the door handles are the same as the model 3 now the way that the ventilation system works is completely different than it was before they kind of copied the model 3 and the model y with that one as well point is there's way more upgrades to this car than what i'm talking about in the video so go do your own research and look at all the upgrades if you want to i just wanted to bring up some of the things that i found interesting because i don't want to watch like a 45 minute video of every single upgrade those are just some of the the things that I thought were interesting. If you guys have anything that I missed, put it down in the comments below. And as always, if you guys have any video suggestions, put them down in the comments. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video, be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.